Hey everybody, it's Tanya from Shooting Star SVG back and today I am going to bring you an Inkscape tutorial on how to trace basic images and I'm going to go through some different um, tutorial types on Inkscape over the next couple of weeks just to teach you guys how powerful this free editing program is that you can utilize. So um, I did something that I don't normally do and I pulled this unicorn outline off of Google um, just to show you how powerful this tool can be. It is a basic outline of an image. You can see a slight watermark in the back there. I do not recommend pulling images off of Google. I'm just showing you this for demo purposes because I didn't really have an extremely intricate detailed outline that I could provide to you. Um, but before we get started, please give a like and subscribe below if this video is useful to you at the end. I will provide some timestamps in the description so that if you need to come back to the video, you can kind of pick up where you left off, although I am going to kind of keep it as short and simple as possible. So what you're going to do for the purposes of this is load your outline into Inkscape, okay, and set your canvas size up. Um, you can do that by hitting Control shift d which is going to bring up your document properties where you can change your size. And I'm just doing a 12 inch by 12 inch because that's what um, I'm going to bring this into Silhouette Studio when I'm done. So hold on just one second. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to want to do is trace this outline. Okay, so to uh, do that, you're going to go up to your path and you're going to hit Trace Bitmap. You can also achieve this by hitting Shift Alt Bravo or B on your keyboard, and that will come up with this window. Now, um, if you were doing a color image, we'd be handling things a little bit differently, but here, since it's black and white, um, we are going to just unclick smooth. Um, in this case, we don't have a background that we need to really worry about, so we don't have to worry about checking the remove background. I do have live preview checked so you can see what the changes are. And basically all we're going to do for this is change the threshold. And I'm going to bring it as up as far as possible. And you can see it's pulling that watermark in as I bring that threshold up. So I'm going to drop it back down until that goes away. And it looks like I'm going to bring it down to about 80 percent just to be safe and um, what I mean by 80 percent is this goes from zero all the way up to one um, so that's kind of what I, I use that for and you're just gonna go ahead and click OK now it looks like it didn't do anything you did see a slight color difference um, you can go ahead and close out of this panel but basically what it did was it created a copy on top of your original image okay and if you zoom in, and you can do that by holding down the control key and rolling your mouse, you can see that the lines are all pretty smooth. Um, the nodes look pretty good. Doesn't look like there would be any issues cutting this file. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom back out. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to bring this over back onto the workspace. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And now I'm going to show you how to break this apart so that you can color it. Okay. And basically what you're going to do here is you're going to go to path and then you're going to hit break apart. You can also achieve this by hitting shift control K on your keyboard. And for the purposes of this, I'm just going to go through the menus. You can see all of the keyboard shortcuts when you open up the menu in Inkscape, which is a very nice feature because as you get used to working with the program, you can use keyboard shortcuts, which will save you time versus having to click through the menu. Anyways, go ahead and click break apart. Everything's going to turn black. So now you're probably thinking, what the hell am I going to do with this, Tanya? This isn't going to help me at all. And now I just get a big black blob. Well, no. Now we're going to go over to edit pass by nodes. And the reason why is because when you go over and mouse over and just the regular select and transform, you're not going to see anything. But if you click on edit pass by node, Inkscape has this cool feature will actually highlight what you're going for so you know what you're working with and what piece you're working with, right? So we're going to go ahead and start coloring this in. And for the purposes of this, I'm just going to keep it pretty simple. I mean, you can go pretty wild with it. 
I know um, what parts are going to be white. Now, as you're selecting pieces, you can hold the shift key down and it will select multiple pieces and then that way you can color them all in at the same time. I missed one. So it'll be a little bit easier for you and then the hooves I'm going to leave black. It'll be a little bit easier for you to get this done quicker. And again, I'm just going through. Oh gosh, I forgot to hit the shift key. That's okay. I'm trying to cruise through this as quick as what I can because it is a little bit time consuming when you're sitting here coloring everything in. But we are nearly finished. And depending on how intricate your design is, this can take a little while or not. Okay, so as you can see, and I'll go back to select our original image here versus our colored image. They're pretty darn close, right? I'm going to go ahead and delete that because we don't need it anymore. Now, one thing I do want to make note of is that the background of this is going to be all black. Okay, we'll go back here. So before I save this as an SVG, I'm going to select everything on the artboard except for that background. And I'm going to hit Control G. Okay. You can also, sorry about that, I had to go check on my kid. You can hit Control G or you can go to Object um, Group. Okay. And the reason why I wanted to group that is because that's going to group all of the things that we just colored in. Okay. And then I'm going to select both now, all back all black background and the colors and I'm going to hit control G again and that's going to group everything okay so now I'm going to go ahead and take this and I'm going to export it as an SVG I'm just going to hit control shift S so that's going to bring up the save and I'm going to save this as unicorn test it's going to ask me if I want to overwrite it because I just previously did this to make sure that I could run through it smoothly for you guys and click replace so now that we have saved this to an SVG, we can bring it into Silhouette Studio if you have Business Edition, okay? If you don't have Business Edition, you're going to have to save this as a DXF, and I'll go through both. Uh, da, 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 da. And just click Save. You don't need to change any of this. Click OK. Now we're going to go ahead and op open up Silhouette Studio. I already have it open. I was working in it earlier. And we're going to go ahead and open up that unicorn test. And you can see the file that we just converted. Now, if you go and click send right now, you'll see exactly where this thing is cutting. And so you can leave this as is if it's how you want it. Okay. And these red lines are where all your cut lines are going to be. So if you layer this appropriately, you can get all that. But if you just want the outline to be cut out so you can layer a different way, I'm going to show you how to do that, okay? So you can go ahead and ungroup this. And again, when you move that, you're going to see your solid black background. If you don't want that, what you're going to do is open up your Modify panel, okay? select both of your layers the color and the black and you're just going to click on subtract all okay and what that's going to do is it's going to take all of the color and subtract it out but if you notice these two pieces didn't go with it so what we're going to do is we're going to ungroup again and it's going to ungroup each one of these little colors okay and you're going to select the two pieces that didn't go with the black, you're going to group them together. Select the white background that they're attached to, which is this big piece right here. Okay. So select your two black pieces. Select your background piece and then click subtract all. 
And then I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so you can see when I take this away now, you have it cut out. And I'm just going to change the color of this so you can see what that looks like. Okay. So you can see the grid lines behind these pieces, okay? Now you can see the grid lines behind these two black pieces, whereas before you could not. All right. And then for continuity purposes, I'm going to select all of the black lines and I'm just going to hit control E, which is make a compound path. And now you have your outline again if you decide that you want to recolor it. Okay. You don't have to go through that step if you don't want to, because again, when you click on send, you'll see that nothing has changed and all of the same places that are going to be cut out are going to be cut out. So it just depends on how you're layering your vinyl and what you're trying to achieve. Um, I do have some tutorials on layering vinyl and I'll throw that in um, as a card in the top corner in just a second so you guys can go see that if you need to. And that's all there is to it. Um, yeah, you've success successfully, can't speak tonight. Trace an image in Inkscape and moved it over to Silhouette Studio. I'm going to go ahead and open up Cricut Design Space real quick and show you what that looks like in Design Space. Okay, so just hold on one second. Hey, it took a few minutes for Design Space to load up. So here we go. We go ahead and click on Upload Image, Browse. We're going to click on the Unicorn Test SVG file that we just created. Click on Save. And then we can click on this and click insert image. Now, usually when these open up from Inkscape, they are huge. And you will see this and saying, oh, this is way too big for design space. So all you're going to do is go over here to your size. Make sure your lock proportions is on. Change it to 10 by 10 if that's what you desire or 10 by whatever. And then just go over to your position and go zero to zero. And it'll bring it up to where it needs to go to. Okay. Now, when you see the file, you can see that everything is broken out into color. So for the purposes of cutting your file, you're going to want to weld everything. So just start selecting the common colors. I've selected all of the brown and the horn. You can click weld there. Click on all of the turquoise or teal, whatever color you want to call that. Make sure you get all of the pieces. And click on weld and then we're going to get all of the white and click on weld and then we're going to click on all of the black but not that black background and click on weld all right and now everything is organized and pieced well you can click on make it and it is going to set up your mats and you can see we have all of the white pieces here the black background the black hooves, ear, and nose portion, the horn, and the hair. And that's it. You can go ahead and um, cut your vinyl and layer as needed, and you're good to go. No further steps needed. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and get back into um, Silhouette Studio. Okay, so there's one more quick thing that I want to go through. And for those of you who only have basic edition of Silhouette Studio, I just want to go ahead and open up that DXF file that we created and show you how to manipulate that. Okay. And it's going to be a very similar process to what we just went through with Inkscape. So it is going to be kind of a pain in the butt, but it is what it is. If you don't want to pay for the upgrade, um, this is the pain that you're going to have to go through. So you can see here when you do the DXF file, it is just going to give you the straight up outline. And if you notice, and it's the first thing I notice when I open up the file is that some of these lines didn't really transfer over well. So you might have to manipulate some paths when you do this. Um, let 
to smooth that out. And that's the only one that really looked wonky. So, uh, oh, this one down here looks a little wonky. Regardless, I'm not going to go through um, really how to fix all of the lines that have kind of wonked out. It's just going to take too much time right now. So it's all the more reason for you to go ahead and upgrade to Business Edition. Regardless, you can go ahead and color that outline, and for the most part, it is exactly what we have created in Inkscape, okay? And you're going to go through the same process that we went through in Inkscape, but you're going to be using the transform panel. I'm um, sorry, the modify panel, and you're just going to release your path. And it's going to break apart the file like we did previously, where you have a completely black background. And then the, um, the shapes. And you're basically just going to go through and fill those in like we did before, except you're just going to go through each piece. And I'm not going to sit here and go through each piece because it's literally the same process that we just followed in Inkscape, so you should be able to figure that out. Um, again, if your lines are a little bit walked out, you want to play with some of the settings in Inkscape to get a cleaner DXF file. Um, and I'll go through that in another tutorial, but for the ease, the ease of this tutorial, I'm just going to leave this as is. So, um, yep, that's all I've got. You know, um, it's a pretty neat trick to be able to take something and uh, color it or create it into something new. So hopefully y'all learned something. If you got something out of this video, please hit like and subscribe. Share it with your folks so that you can pass this knowledge along. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm more than happy to answer them. And if you need anything, Feel free to drop a comment, or if there's something else in Inkscape you'd like to see, also drop a comment and let me know. And again, another plug, just go ahead and click like and subscribe, and you can stay up to date on design tricks and other things that I go and do on this blog. So I will catch y'all later.